Welcome back. In this lesson, we are going to be going over the bevel tool. We are going to be doing some crazy bevels on this cube, and we're going to make a bevel box. So let's go ahead and learn how to bevel. First off, let's create a new project, or go ahead and open up Blender if you haven't already. And we'll just do new general. And before I forget, let's go ahead and do file, save as. And we'll just call this bevel. For the bevel tool, we're going to get rid of Suzanne. So just click on Suzanne, hit X, and make sure you have in your viewport shading, you have your X-ray and cavity enabled. And I'm gonna turn on my matte caps to this funky color. You can pick any color you want or just leave it, whatever you wanna do. Now, let's add our cube. And this is gonna be the cube that we bevel. So do Shift A, add a cube, and we can make it maybe like 20 millimeters, just something kind of small. And now let's take this cube on into edit mode. And there are three different ways that I know of that you can bevel things. Uh, the first one is you can click on a face or an edge and do control B and that will bevel. And then, you know, you can also scroll with your mouse wheel and that will add little segments. So you can get a nice smooth bevel right there. And I'll just hit escape. The second way I know how to bevel is to use the bevel tool. And the bevel tool will pop up with this yellow little thumbtack, and you can just click and drag that, and it does a very similar thing, but whoop, this little guy will pop up right here in the bottom left. And now you can change the parameters on the fly, or add segments, you know, that way you have a little bit more control and you can kind of type it in. Uh, we're gonna go over every single one of these today, so, you know, don't worry, but uh, let's just hide that for now, and we'll just undo that. So the tool is the second way. And the third way, and my favorite way, is to use modifiers like the bevel modifier. But this course is all about tools, not modifiers. So we're not gonna cover it with the uh, modifier today, even though it is my favorite. Uh, we're gonna use the old school bevel tool. And the reason I don't really like this tool, uh, I, I kinda have a love-hate relationship with it. I love the bevel, but when you bevel with the tool, it is very, destructive, meaning I can't go back and make changes. You know, once I lock this in, say if I wanted to make this like that, and if I click away, now if I wanna go back in here and change this to maybe make it smoother, I can't really do that. Uh, so I'd have to delete, and it can just turn into a, a headache. Um, when I design, I like to keep everything very flexible, so I wanna teach y'all to do the same, but today I'll show you how to use the bevel tool. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm just gonna undo that. So if you were following along, just undo everything until you come back to this normal cube. So we're still in edit mode and we've got our bevel tool and just click and drag this little guy here and that will start to bevel. And you should get a pop-up box here and that is where you can type in your offset. So let's just type in maybe five and that's gonna be five millimeters from the offset and then we can switch it to width and watch what happens to our little bevel here. If we do width, it kind of changes a little bit or if we do depth. And so they all look different, but they're all saying five millimeters. So what's going on here? Well, I have a nice little picture that will show you kind of what's going on here. So the first one is offset. So it's, if this outer line is the outside of our original cube we brought in, the offset is from this original corner to the new bevel point. So that means the offset right here is five millimeters. From this point to here is five millimeters. The width is changing. It's saying from this point to this point is five millimeters. So as 3D print designers, we're probably gonna use width most of the time, but uh, you know, just wanna let you know what, what's going on under the hood here. And then for depth, it's actually doing five millimeters from the original point to the center of you know, kind of how far did it did it bevel in from this center point? So this is a really good one to really understand. So you kind of understand what the numbers are you're punching in here. But I'm just going to leave it on width. That means every line from here to here is five millimeters. From here to here is five millimeters. Everything's five millimeters around, and that is cool. And we can also increase the segments. So maybe we'll just crank up the segments to maybe five, and that looks pretty good. And so there we got a bevel, pretty easy, right? And then there's also percent. So percent 
is a little different. Percent and absolute, they're a little different than these three. Uh, percent is just going to be the percentage of the entire cube. So if I did, uh, you know, like maybe if we did 5%, it's going to be very, very tiny. You know, it's just a very tiny uh, percentage of the entire cube. And notice I clicked out, so now my bevel is locked in. And that's one of the reasons why I don't like using this tool, but let's just do Control-Z. And we'll bevel again. Type in 5 for the width and 5 segments. And now we're back. Just in case you did that, that's how you'd get it back. So now we've got our cube. And then the last one is absolute. And I'm not really seeing a huge difference between offset an absolute, um, but it just says the amount is absolute distance along the adjacent edge. So I think of it just kind of as offset. Uh, don't really use that one that much, but that's what it does. And then below that we have vertex only. So say if you only wanted to bevel the corners or the vertexes, it's just going to do the corners there for you. Or if you want to do clamp overlap, I'll show you what it does. So if we don't have clamp overlap on, notice we can invert our geometry and that's gonna be terrible for 3D print design. Uh, so it's very good to just turn on your clamp overlap or just be very mindful. So notice now, if you try and crank up the value, it'll actually just stop you. I mean, you can still increase the number, but it's not gonna go past um, the overlap. It's gonna stop you. So that's very helpful uh, to keep all of your geometry manifold and 3D printable. And then loop slide, let me show you what that will do. So say if we took this right here, maybe just these little guys here. So I'm just shift clicking on these. And we'll go to the profile here. Say we wanted to bevel these a little bit like that. If I go to the profile view, the loop slide is gonna try and keep everything even. So it's kind of hard to see there. Let's see if I can zoom in. It, the loop slide is gonna, it's very, very tiny noticeable, but it's just gonna slide the bevel down the edges that are already there. So if you ever need to just straighten some things up, sometimes turning on and off the loop slide can help. I'm just gonna leave that off and just undo all of that. And I clicked out again, so we'll have to go back in. I'll just undo, click it down. And this is just good practice to how to bevel edges. We'll do five for the width and five segments. And then we have mark seams, mark sharp, and hardened normals. These are mainly for rendering and for like adding materials and stuff. Uh, we're not going to do that too much in these lessons. We're just doing hard surface modeling, uh, but we will talk about that in future lessons. But for today, just know that these are for uh, rendering and lighting and materials. So you don't really have to worry about those too much in this lesson. And we've already talked about segments, but next we have shape. So it's going to default at 0.5, but if you slide this value, notice what happens to your bevel. And this, it can be really fun uh, to play with. So maybe you want it to go really far out like that, or come in so you can do some funky, uh, you know, shapes of your profile of your bevel with that really easily. Let's just leave it on 0.5, but that's what that one does. And this material negative one is referencing the color or material that you have on your cube. We're not going to be doing that today. That doesn't pertain to us too heavily since we're doing hard surface modeling, uh, but that um, is for rendering and, um, you know, adding materials to your bevels. And next we're gonna talk about Mitter Type. So this one's really cool. Let's just undo and then select everything. So I just hit A on your keyboard. And what I want you to do is bevel the entire cube. So let's just click and drag. That's gonna bevel everything. We can do offset of five for the width and the segments can be five. There we go. Now we've got these cool little squares on the inside. So I want you to click out of your bevel. We've essentially confirmed it. So we can't go back and change it. We're moving forward. And now I want you to shift click on all of these little squares that have appeared. You know, all these faces, just shift click and get all six of them. And then we're gonna use our old friend, the extrude individual tool and just click and drag and just kind of push that in. Um, and we don't wanna go too far in where we invert on itself. So maybe just let it go there, maybe do like five for the offset and just kind of look around, make sure you're not colliding with any of the, 
the inside geometry there. I may even do Alt Z, kind of go look inside. And that's looking pretty close to me, a little too close. So I'm gonna undo that and then do one more time, bring them in, maybe do like 4.5, just to be safe. I wanna make sure there's a gap on the inside there. And there we go. So now we've got this interesting looking cube here, but what we wanna do is bevel the, the inner squares or the inner cubes here. So to do that, just click on, just double click or alt click on the edge there, this little inner edge, and it should do a loop select around the inner kind of walls inside of there. And then now we want to bevel that. So let's just bevel it just a little bit. There we go. Maybe something like that, maybe like 0.75. There, that's pretty good. And we're going to increase the segments. I would just say one. We'll just increase it to one. Maybe do the segments to six. And again, you can play with these however you want. But notice we've got some really cool edges showing up here. And we're gonna use the midter type. And that is talking about the corners here, here, up here and on the inside. So let's just kind of show you the different ones. That way you can kind of uh, get an idea of what these do. So if we change the outer from sharp to patch, notice what happens up here in the top. So we'll go from outer to patch. And notice that it changed to like these little patchy cubes. So that's just changing the shape of the outer uh, curve here. And we could also switch it from patch to arc. And now it is made like an arc right here. So just depending on what kind of look you're going for, um, that's what these guys right here do. And so we're gonna do both of these, the outer and the inner. But for this one, let's just leave this one on sharp. And then maybe for the inner, we could switch that to arc. And notice the inner guy right in here has been turned into an arc right there or if we switched it back to sharp, it's more of a sharp angle. So that's what the inner one does, just so you kind of have an idea. So let's just leave both of those on sharp and then just click out and there we go. We've confirmed, so that's our midter on sharp, sharp. And let's go to the next one, do the same thing, just double click or alt click right there and get the loop. Let's just go ahead and bevel it a little bit and we'll type in one and six for our segments and for the outer, we can do patch, which changed the little patches right here. And then for this one, the inner, we can do arc. And that arcs it right there. So that looks pretty cool. And we'll just do the same thing for the next two. And this will just, just kind of show you the difference. You can take a look, and just kind of get used to seeing what the different versions look like. So with this one, we'll do another bevel. Do one, six for the segments. And we can do arc and sharp. So those are those together. Definitely has a different look. And then for the last one, just double click here, do a bevel, do one, six segments. And these we can do arc and arc. So now we've got four different looks for our, our inner and outer edges there for our bevels. So hopefully that helped just kind of show you the different looks that you can achieve with this. So now let's do some more beveling. Let's go into, make sure you're still in edit mode, grab this top plane here, and let's go talk to our old friend, Mr. Extrude Manifold. And let's just bring him on up right there. And notice on the inside, there's no geometry. So. That's what you don't, if you, everyone go Alt Z, make sure there's no like old um, inner cube there. Um, if so, you can delete all that and just, you know, make a new uh, new face there. And if you're in Blender 2.8 or in the, uh, an earlier version than uh, the 2.9 that I'm in, uh, what you can do is just shift click on the edge there or shift alt click and just get all that, hit X and dissolve faces. And that should kind of even everything back out for you. And then you can just extrude up. So just extrude up a little bit. 
So now that you've got this extruded, I uh, just want you to select the top and all these around the sides. You can shift click on all sides. Or what I like to do is if you've got the top selected, just hold control and plus on the numpad and that will just select, you know, it'll increase the selection. And then now we can make sure you have your bevel tool and just bevel it on up just a little bit. You don't want to go too far where you're inverting, but just kind of, you know, somewhere in there, maybe in the like 0.75 kind of ballpark. And next on our little list here is face strength mode. And this is new and it actually works in conjunction with a modifier called weighted normals. Um, so we're not gonna go into that today uh, too much, but we will in the future course called uh, blender modifiers. Uh, so let's go into the next one, which is intersection type. And with the intersection type, say if we increased our segments to maybe something like, you know, three or six, we'll just do six. Now, if we change our intersection type, it's talking about the intersection, these corners here, and we can leave it to grid fill, which is what it's doing here. Let me zoom in so you can kind of see, it looks kind of like a grid, or you can do cut off, and it'll do exactly that. It will cut off the corners. And sometimes you want that, sometimes you don't, uh, but I'm just gonna leave it on grid fill, but that's what that does. And next we're gonna do a really fun one, which is profile type. So let's just undo this last bevel we did, and just select the top plane here, and let's bevel that, just the top one, just like that. And we can put that on three. And for the profile type, we're gonna need a lot more geometry. So let's crank that up to like 30. We need as much geometry as we can get. And for the profile type, usually it's just set to super ellipse, which is kind of just the default, but they've added this one called custom, and it's very cool. So right off the bat, you can see it just flattened it out, and it's also flattened the profile of our bevel. So you can come in here with your mouse and click and drag and do really funky, really fun uh, bevels on the fly here. They also have presets right here beside it. There's a little drop down. You can do support loops. And so that one's a little bit more of a, you know, a sh kind of a tighter bevel. You can also drag some of these points and start making really weird kind of cuts inside of the uh, the geometry there, which is pretty cool. Um, you may have to increase some of your uh, segments to see the curve. You could also do cornice molding, which looks pretty awesome. So that looks really great. And you know, you can obviously tweak those if you want. And if you see this little, uh, this little arrow to arrow button, that just inverts the the style there. So it just inverts the pattern like that. And then you can also do crown molding, which looks pretty cool. And you can invert that as well. That one looks pretty awesome. If you're doing ceilings or need something kind of fancy or regal looking. And you can also do steps. And not all of them are perfect. So you may have to increase the segments up here until you get kind of the desired look. Maybe somewhere in like the 60s, 65. So that looks pretty cool. So just pick one of these. I'll just leave it on steps there. And next we're gonna add um, some more effects here to the other parts of the cube. So what I want you to do is look on the, the sides of your cube and you wanna look for a, one of the squares that doesn't have the arc uh, mid or corner there. Leave those just how they are. What we wanna find are the sharp ones. So just click on one of the sharp edges there, or sharp faces. And we'll just go to our extrude tool and just extrude that out. And we'll go to our bevel tool and bevel it on in. We can do three. And this right here is just really for y'all just to have some fun, just playing around with all the different bevel types. So maybe we'll do 30 and then go to custom and just pick you know any one of these. I'm gonna do support loops and maybe just play with some of these. And so feel free to do anything you want with those. Then I'm gonna grab this one over here. Whoop. Grab our extrude tool, extrude it out, go to the bevel tool, then bevel it. We can do the same numbers, just three, 30. 
go to custom and just switch to one of the other ones. This one I'll do cornice molding. Looks pretty cool. And then for the last one, we're going to click on this last face and maybe do the exact same thing we did before. You can use your extrude manifold uh, just to just to pull that right back out. Or you can delete the faces and uh, you know dissolve the faces like we did on the other one. Uh, and then here, let's go into see-through mode, make sure there's no geometry left over. That looks good. And we'll just use bevel and bevel it on out. Do our same numbers, three. And feel free to change. You don't have to do the exact same numbers that I'm doing. Um, just if you are following along, you know, these are some numbers you can use. And then for custom, we'll do this last one, crown molding. Maybe invert it. Let's see. Yeah, that one looks cool. And there we go. We've got some really funky bevels going on here. And we really didn't have to do a lot of manual modeling other than just kind of selecting some faces and then adding some some bevels. So hopefully that taught you a lot more about uh, beveling shapes. And there we go. We've got a crazy looking cube here, um, a bevel box with all these different looks, um, just to kind of show you what is possible with all the different functions of the bevel. And just to remind you, all of these are locked in. So all these changes are baked into the geometry. So you're not going to be able to go back and change it. You would have to go back in if you wanted to and like, you know, select a square, hold control plus, select all this, you know, and then go through and then, you know, delete all that and start over. So that's why I don't really like to use the bevel tool unless it's something I know 100% for a fact, I'm not going to have to change in the future or make it more or less smooth. Um, and that's just not how I work because I like to be as flexible as possible. Uh, so I tend to not use it, but if you know for sure you don't have, you're never going to change it, then, you know, feel free to use the bevel tool. So now let's go ahead and prep this for 3D printing. So we're going to just rename it. Let's call it maybe like bevel, bevel box. This is our bevel box and we'll go to our 3D print toolbox. I'm in edit mode and we'll just check all. And there we go, we've got zero manifold faces. So this would probably 3D print, no problem. But let's just go ahead and check out what else we got. We've got some intersecting faces. That's probably from our extrude manifold. Um, so I'm not really worried too much about that. We've got some zero faces. Let's see, we'll just shift H. We've got a zero face somewhere in here. So we'll do alt H to bring it back. So maybe we may have geometry just on top of itself. So let's just click A to select all, do mesh, cleanup, and merge by distance. So we removed four vertices. That probably was the verdict, but let's just try. Uh, hey, there it was. So somewhere along the, the day, I extruded on top of some geometry, and that's what made it all mess up there. So pretty cool. So that's how the uh, 3D print toolbox can help. Just kind of show you what's going on. We've got some overhanging faces, which will probably need some support material on some of these, like inside of here. I may even rotate this. So maybe we go, maybe select all, do rotate X and 90, and I'll probably 3D print it probably like that. I think that might be kind of an easier 3D print. So we'll need some, uh, some supports on the bottom here. You know, all this may need supports uh, just a little bit. And when I rotate it, it said we have non-flat faces. So let's just look at that. It's saying it's this guy right here. So let's just go to clean up and do distorted and bloop. And there we, that should fix it. Check all. Hey, everything zeroed out. That's the way we like it. We've got our overhanging faces. So we may need a little support material. All these horizontal um, guys right here that are just sticking out. Um, but yeah, that's it. So let's go ahead and export it. So we'll tell Blender where we want to send it. And I've just got an STLs folder here. Hit accept and export. We'll get the confirmation and let's just go ahead and bring it into our slicer. So I'm using Prusa 2.2. We'll just import 
our bevel box. Hey, hey, there he is. And it's super, super tiny, but maybe, maybe we'll increase the layer height, maybe like 0.1. And let's slice it up. And I'm gonna try and 3D print this without any supports just to see what happens. Uh, but I'm probably gonna need some, uh, but you know, I like to live dangerously. So I'm gonna go ahead and print this. It says it's gonna take about an hour and 20 minutes. And let's go ahead and print that thing.